All right, guys, this is the behind the scenes look at April 2017. This video is going to have clips from Japan and Thailand, but it started at the beginning of the month in the airport in Brisbane. We're getting ready to go to what is now probably our favorite country on earth, Japan. Before we got to Japan, you might have asked yourself, well, how did you get around Brisbane? Answer, the cheapest rental car available, which happened to be a bright pink little Mitsubishi car, which was actually pretty fun to drive. So we wound up going to Japan, the prettiest part of the year in April, which is when the cherry blossoms are blooming. So if you don't like cherry blossoms, you should probably exit this video because there's a bunch of footage and pictures of the beautiful Japanese cherry blossoms. So at, we had a very short stay in Tokyo before we got on a train and headed down to Kyoto. Kyoto is supposed to be the center of the religious temples and the religious organizations. There are tons around Kyoto, so I thought that would be an opportunity to get a good interview. You're watching footage right now from the bullet train going from Fujiyoshida down to Kyoto. I think this train goes 160 miles an hour at its top speed. It's pretty fun. So this is footage from once we got into Kyoto. This is actually the, the stairs the, um, going to our B Airbnb. There's a pretty funny part coming up that I wanted to show you guys. I got such a kick out of it. So this is a pretty humble residence, but it served its job pretty well, and it was very cheap for the area. But you see that little nook on the right? Well, there was a washing machine. What you're looking at is water spilling on the floor. That was the drain pipe for the washing machine was just leaking on, intentionally onto the ground, then through a hole in the fo floor down to the earth. Can't say I've seen anything like that one. Currently waiting at the train station to be picked up by the Zen Buddhist monk here in Japan. Massive, massive failure so far. Now I'm about 40 minutes late because language barrier and oh man so he's been really really kind meeting up with me but I feel pretty stressed right now. So fortunately it actually turned out pretty well. Had a reasonably good interview, was a very nice guy. This is a picture outside of the temple of our conversation. And then things got really good. This is video footage from what's called the Philosopher's Walk in Kyoto, which is this river that's lined by beautiful cherry trees that were in blossom. We got about a million pictures, as you can imagine, as did everybody else. So we're in Kyoto, Japan right now, walking down the Philosopher's Path, enjoying the cherry, beautiful cherry blossoms. This is a great place for contemplation and for lots of selfies as we've been walking. So pretty much the whole path was packed with people, but for good reason, because it was pretty incredible. Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you don't like cherry blossoms, look away, <laughs> because here are some more. We also got to experience Japanese sushi, which was incredible. One morning we walked outside of a training facility where there were sumo wrestlers that were doing their daily training. And then one night we went from Kyoto into Osaka, which is the second biggest city in Japan, which was also gorgeous, just a bit rainy out. After Japan, my wife flew home and I went down by myself to Thailand. It was a pretty crazy experience. Uh, it was definitely the most difficult stretch that I've had so far because I wound up with what they call Bangkok belly. The first night, I got a flight into Bangkok, and then the next morning I was going to Chiang Mai. But the place that I got, the Airbnb that I booked, didn't have air conditioning. I didn't realize it at the time. The, the listing said something like, cooling fan or something, and it was literally like a fan in the room. And it happened to be about 100 degrees at the time in Bangkok. It was all right, but it wasn't exactly uh, luxury. This is footage from something that you see all over Thailand, which are street markets. Tons of food, tons of clothing, tons of guests, and in this case, raw meat sitting out. So like I said, I flew to Chiang Mai, because Chiang Mai is supposed to be the place in Thailand where you had, again, the center of 
the Buddhist religion. There are temples everywhere in Chiang Mai, and there were monk chats, which is where the local Buddhist monks are trying to learn English, and the way they do that is by speaking to English speakers and tourists who want to talk to them about Buddhism or anything else. So naturally, that was a perfect opportunity to get a set of interviews. What you're seeing right now is what is also ubiquitous in Thailand, which is called the tuk-tuks, which are these three-wheeled motorcycles that will overcharge you and take you anywhere in the city, even though they greatly overcharge you compared to other transportation you can get. It's still dirt cheap. So I had three successful interviews while I was in Chiang Mai, but I also had two massive failures where I thought I was going to be speaking to monks and for whatever reason, the monk chat wasn't where I thought it was, wasn't when I thought it was, wasn't going on. This is the first example of that. Today, I'm going to Wat Phrat Dwa Suthep, which is a temple at Buddhist temple at the top of a mountain. I took an Uber most of the way there, but now there's this uh, foreboding line of steps I'll show you here. I made it up, but I, when I got up to the top, I asked around and people didn't know what I was referencing. So whatever site I, I saw, there were monk chats here, turned out there wasn't, and then I wound up getting lost at this very large Buddhist temple at the top of a mountain in Chiang Mai. So I've kind of gotten myself lost, half intentionally. I was looking for this monk talk up on the temple at the top of this mountain. Nobody seemed to know anything about it, or they couldn't speak well enough English to direct me to the place. So I went to this meditation center, and there was no talking policy. There wasn't a monk chat there. So I'm just kind of exploring now. Uh, Turns out I'm kind of in the middle of nowhere. So if I die, um, you know, say hi to everybody for me. I think I think this path will take me to some kind of civilization. I have many thoughts even on my experiences here, um, just observing, not even having a conversation with a monk, but just observing some things. Uh, so hopefully I'll get around to talking about those if I don't end up dead in the jungle. We'll see. The temples themselves are absolutely gorgeous. This is a picture from what's called Duat Sutet, which is supposed to be one of the most sacred sites in Chiang Mai. But I found, to my surprise, totally to my surprise, I actually was very uncomfortable in a lot of these temple locations, just because the amount of wealth and effort that the Thai people put into their idols, to their statues, to the things that they worship was staggering to me. The quality of living in Thailand is fairly low, and yet an incomprehensible amount of wealth has been poured into uh, religious worship, which seems not only incompatible with the Buddhist teachings, but it also kind of strikes me as a unfortunate set of cultural values that I don't agree with. Regardless, that's the behind the scenes video for April. So as always, thank you guys so much for your consistent support. I hope you will find these interviews of value. So thanks again. We'll see you next month.